Hey guys, we are back with some more New York Islanders franchise mode. And in this one, it's pretty clear that we need to follow through with the rebuild because it's just, this team does not have the talent that the rest of Metro does. I mean, New, Jer New Jersey, 19-6-1. I mean, goodness. And we're sitting down here at 10-13-2. And, and then even the Carolina Hurricanes are up there at 13-11. and 11, Four points ahead of us. So, I mean, it's not that big of a difference. But when you take a look at all the teams ahead of us, and even in the Atlantic Division, there's only one team that's below us, <laughs> and that'd be Ottawa. So, there's really... Uh, no doubt that we do need to follow through on the rebuild here. And I do have a couple of trades planned out. But for, but before we do that, actually, we have to sign someone out of free agency so that we can get within the salary cap. Now, there isn't anyone good, obviously, at this point in free agency, but there is Eric Jelena. <laughs> so, uh, and the good thing about this game... An issue in uh, NHL 18 would be if you were to sign, let's say, a depth player such as Eric Jelena to a, or someone, really anybody who wanted a two-way deal in free agency, um, if you were to assign them to a one-way deal, the game would glitch out and put them onto a two-way two deal anyway, so it would make these types of signings impossible. But I just did a test run, and it appears this game does not do that, so we're going to do this here with Eric Jelena, we're going to give him $5 million for the, to play the rest of the year on your New York Islanders, and then he's just going to get released, as this is just to get some cap, to, to stay within the uh, cap floor and the cap ceiling with the trades that we're going to be making. So uh, we will wait until Eric Jelena signs, and there is no doubt that he will, because, <laughs> yeah, you know, he was asking for 700000 and we gave him $5 million, so... I don't see any reason why he wouldn't sign. Yep, there he is. So let's get to the trades now. We had a solid win there against Toronto, but you know what? That's not really enough to convince me that this team is going to turn a new leaf because it's certainly not without some sort of rebuild here. And that means we're going to be getting rid of a lot of the veterans here. So first trade we will be doing is Nick Letty. I mean, he's got some value to him. I mean, he's 84 overall. He's 28, so he's a good age, but, you know, by the end of the GM mode, he'll be 38 or, or 37 or something. So there's no... We just need to get that elite, truly elite defenseman out of the draft. It doesn't look like there is any... Elite defenseman in the draft this year, we as we only saw like two defensemen in the top 20 of this current draft. So we're going to be trading Letty, not to Philadelphia, <laughs> but to Toronto, who are 11 and 16 and 2. So hopefully the tra this trade will work out now. I was hoping to trade for their first and their fourth. But now that they have a worse record than they did... Previously, when I was going to a, when uh, I was scouting out this trade, <laughs> I don't I'm not sure if this will go through just because their first rounder might have increased in value a little bit. Let's see proposed trade trade accepted. Very nice. So we have Nick Letty out of here in favor of a first round pick, which could potentially turn into a lottery pick with Toronto for some reason struggling. And we'll we'll just ignore the roster moves for right now. We're gonna have to do we're gonna, we're gonna have to change up all the lines anyway after the amount of trades we're making. So next trade we will make well we're only making two trades but they're two pretty relatively big trades is Josh Bailey and Thomas Hickey. Eighty one overall defenseman, thirty years of age, three years left on a two point five million dollar contract for Tom Thomas Hickey, and then for Josh Bailey five years left on a five million dollar salary 30 years of age 85 overall so again just getting those veterans out of here we need to follow through on this rebuild if we have any chance of getting an elite prospect so uh <laughs> and i kind of hinted that hinted at it before we're gonna be trading them to philly so bailey and hickey get in there and coming back the other way to your new york islanders will be Andrew McDonald, $5 million, one year, 
So uh, again, just taking back that that salary that we need to stay within the cap. And then as well, coming back the other way, will be Chris Thorburn. Another million in salary for one more year. The two big ones here would be a first for this year and a first for next year. That's right. <laughs> Josh Bailey and Thomas Hickey for two firsts. Andrew McDonald and Chris Thorburn. Will it go through? Yes, it will. There you go. <laughs> so, there you go. Those are the two big trades that we are going to be making for, at least for right now. Uh, maybe not for the episode, because, you know, depending on how the team does. I was considering, honestly, trading Robin Leonard. Because a 901 save percentage. <laughs> I mean, his, his overall has gone up. So, I mean, you know what? It might be a good idea to trade him. But he does have two years on his contract. So if I could trade him at the draft, then that'd be good. Because, honestly, the, the only reason I'm not trading him, as of right now anyway, is because he's got such a bad save percentage that he might be good for the tank anyway. <laughs> so we're just going to keep rolling with Robin Leonard for right now. And then Thomas Grace, yeah, whatever. I mean... I don't think any team's going to want to take him. I mean, maybe, but, you know, I don't think he'll get too much in return. So, this is our current lineup <laughs> after those two trades. Lee, Burzell, Eberly, Duclair, Beauvillier, Hosang, Nelson, Sezikis, Clutterbuck, Thorburn, Martin, McFlicker. <laughs> McFlickier. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, Hosang... He, it's good that he's a second liner now, uh, and Duclair is actually a second liner as well, so that's that's good to good to know. But as you can see, the defense is in absolute shambles right now as Adam Pellick <laughs> is first line defense with Ryan Pulak. So, uh, am I keeping Pulak? Yes, as he is within the age that we uh, we want. We want guys who still have potential. At twenty five, Pulak still technically has potential. But all these guys, I mean, not really going too, <laughs> too far, I wouldn't imagine. So I think the only mainstay here is going to be Pulak. And then obviously, Burzell. Then you got Hosang, Duclair, who are within the age range, Beauvillier. But then everyone else, like Nelson, Lee, Everly, could be trade bait as well. <laughs> you never know. I mean, Lee's got that four-year contract. Everly's got that four-year contract. Nelson has a one-year deal, so we would have to trade him by the deadline. And then goaltenders, uh, Leonard, as we just saw, has a two-year deal. So we could tr trade him at the draft if we, if we wanted to, or even at the trade deadline. But as of right now, he's been pretty terrible. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's only helping our case to get the first overall pick if we keep Leonard. Um, unless he, again, starts to tear it up. So, now that we have all that out of the way, uh, actually, before we simulate, I want to check the draft board <laughs> just to see where our projected draft picks are at. Because, I mean, I think we have four for this year now. Because we traded for San Jose's, right? Yeah, we have four first-round picks for this year. Our own, Phillies, San Jose's, and Toronto's. So, yeah, we're projected to pick 10th with Toronto's. 20s with San Jose, 20 with Philly, and then 10th with our own. So, got got a good variety of picks right there. And let's hope that our own pick and Toronto's pick stay lottery picks. I mean, I would imagine our own pick stays a lottery pick, but kind of crossing my fingers that Toronto doesn't go on a tear towards the end of the year. <laughs> so, Ryan Pulak is injured. So, there, there goes our, uh, our mainstay defenseman, injured till December 12th. With an injured groin. So now our defense, our best defenseman, I believe, is Adam Pellick. <laughs> Jeez. All right, so we're, we're going to wait a little bit on the draft class. We'll check it at the end of this month. Lost to San Jose. Yeah, sure, we'll just go best lines. Lost to Arizona. Shootout win against Vancouver. LA, they're pretty good. 5-2 to two loss. Keep it going, boys. Keeper Bellows is injured. That is unfortunate. Replace player for the Miners. There we go. Lost to St. Louis. <laughs> Increasing that draft stock. 
game by game. Keeper Bellows is back. Uh, let's and it, let's edit my lines manually for the AHL just in case. Okay, so Molson, Docol, Ragnarsson's down here. Petty, Ottoson, Cody McLeod. We don't need Cody McLeod. Okay, so Bellows, yep, get back in there. Is there anybody else? Bailey, Bork, Johnston, is he got? Is he one? No. Centers, just making sure. Holmstrom? No, nah, I didn't think so. Yeah, none of these guys. And then right wingers, St. Denis, Holmstrom. <laughs> we have two Holmstroms? <laughs> I guess, so. yeah, B. Holmstrom and, and J. Holmstrom. But no, that is it. So let's just make sure that Ragnarsson's getting the time that he needs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's another forward. We'll leave him in the fourth line with Ottoson and Petty. Then you got Setaguchi, Hamilton, Bellows, Booth, Gotch, Bork, and then Wallstrom, Dalco, and Molson. Let's see. Let's check on Wallstrom. Oh, yeah, he's doing well. He's doing very well for himself down here. 27 points in 22 games for Oliver Wallstrom, plus seven. He's looking very, very solid. Defensively, let's see. Let's just make sure here as well. Kane LaFranchise, and then you got Benoit, Cullody, Quenville, Rajib. Yeah, that looks to be good. Oh, <laughs> Jelena's down here as well. We may as well uh, see what he is. I'm not going to call him up to the NHL just yet because his potential is AHL top two. So I wouldn't imagine he's any more than like a 76. Bodie Wild, how's he doing? 11 goals. <laughs> oh my, Bodie Wild. 11 goals and only one assist. <laughs> Sniper of a defenseman for sure. Three power play goals. Looking solid. Now, how about Sallow? Okay, I mean, nothing too special. So, that's it for the AHL. <laughs> Let's get back to the simulation. New Jersey 4-3 loss. Tampa 4-1 loss. Yep, it's just keep, it's keep <laughs> racking up those losses, boys. Replace player. All right, so we're going to have to add the AHL once again after this simulation is done. 7-4 loss to Buffalo. There's a few wins right there. But nothing too impressive. We are 15, 21, and 2. So, uh, obviously, with those trades, we are clearly signaling <laughs> that we are continuing the rebuild for the New York Islanders. Now, are we last in the league? Not quite. I believe we're third last. Because last would be Vegas, and then second last would be Nashville. All right, so let's check out the stats real quick. Not going to go too in-depth, as I do want to get... Try to get the majority, if not all, of the rest of the season done today in this episode. Anders Lee with 18 goals. Ho Sang with 11 in 38 games. And then assists, you got Everly with 20. Burzell with 19. So really just an off year for really everybody. I mean, even Matt Burzell only with 26 points at this point in the season. Not too great for him. I mean, minus 13. Like, it just this whole team's just in shambles right now. <laughs> so I, I can't really blame him. Obviously, our defense is absolutely terrible. 113 shots for Lee, 90 for Eberle, 84 for Duclair, 74 for Bovillier, 73 for Burzell. Shooting percentage, you got 18.3 for Hosang, 15.9 for Lee. Game-winning goals, you got three for Lee. Power play goals, you got four for Hosang, three for Lee. Power play points, you got six for Eberle and Burzell. Shorthanded points, he got two for Mar <laughs> Matt Martin, and then one for Lee, Bovillier, and Georges each. Face-off percentage, Sezikas and Burzell and Bovillier all doing well. Nelson could do a bit better, but you know what? Hey, our, our three main centers there, especially Burzell, doing well for themselves. Hits, you got Lee with 73, Pulak with 63, Pelik with 56, that's... <laughs> That's a bit of a, a bit of a tongue twister right there to say Pulak and Pelik back to back. Pretty similar sounding names. Blocks, you got 63 for, of course, Pulak and Pelik. And then you got Mayfield with 39, Georges with 24, McDonald with 19, Sezikis with 15. And then giveaways and takeaways, I expect this to be absolutely terrible. Uh, but well, yeah, it's not too bad. Same thing for Lee, Hosang. Clutterbuck's actually pretty good as well. Nelson could be better. Eberle could be better, but that's fine. Burzell could be a lot better. Yeah, Burzell could be a lot better there. 
Duclair could be better. McFlick, McFlicker, we'll just call him that. Okay, I, Mc, McFlicker just kind of rolls off the tongue better than McFlicky. I know it's McFlicky or however it's pronounced, but it, it's funny anyway. So Pulak, Pelak, yeah, I mean that's gonna happen, especially on our team. Yeah, okay. So goaltenders, let's just see Leonard. Yeah, Leonard is absolutely terrible this year. <laughs> Eight ninety nine save percentage. So we'll just keep rolling with him because again. If he's going to guarantee us the first overall, well, guarantee us the best chance at the first overall pick, then I'm okay with it. Now, let's see where each of our draft picks sit in terms of value. Obviously, our own is pretty <laughs> pretty solid. But how about Toronto's? Uh, they're still roughly halfway there. So, I mean, they're probably, what's the record at right now? 19, 19, and 2. Yeah, that's, that's about what I expected. So, they clearly got back into a rhythm. So, that's unfortunate for us. Now, do I want to make any trades? Not right now. I think we could just keep going until the trade deadline. Because we're it's not like we're struggling to lose or anything right now. I mean, I mean, if you take a look here. Loss, 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 win, loss, win, win. So, we got a couple wins in there recently. But... For the most part, we're losing, so we'll just keep rolling with it. Minnesota, Calgary, there's a loss right there. Salo is back, so we're going to have to put him back in. He's a pretty decent prospect. We'll take LaFranchise out of there. As good as his name is, you know, <laughs> uh, leave him in there for our prospects. And did I just put Benoit in there? I think I did. Yes, indeed I did. I did not put Salo in there. My mistake. <laughs> okay, there we go. Getting back to the NHL. Calgary, 4-3 win against them. A 4-2 win against LA. What is going on here? As soon as we... Okay. what? Can can we start losing again, please, boys? I want to get a, a good draft pick. What, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> and we get points against Colorado. All right, a loss against New Jersey. But jeez, man. What is going on here in New York? Shootout loss against the Rangers. Arizona. For nothing. What is happening? <laughs> All right, let's check out the draft class. We didn't do that before. So you got Muller. All right, what are our, what are our scouts doing? Like, the, the, half of these guys are unknown still. <laughs> All right, we, we might have to, like, around the trade deadline, I think we're going to take a more hands on approach with our scouts because auto scouting, clearly, these guys are not getting it done, uh, especially with Albert still being completely unknown. And then Drew and Delorier, still unknown. Zubov is only a two, what are we going to call that? Two, uh, <laughs> two bars. Uh, Igor Dadanov, one bar. And then Rahala is unknown. Toyber, only two bars there. Durand, unknown. So we're going to definitely have to take a more hands-on approach to this. Because as of right now, we only have four guaranteed elites that are scattered. We got Andres Muller. In Germany, well, I'm guessing Germany, sounds German, against A-minus competition, 12 goals in 32 games, so he, he looks pretty solid. And then you got Damien Mills in the U.S., 34 goals, 40 assists. I mean, he looks very solid as well. Then you got Xavier Fallon, playmaker in Switzerland. Again, all these top five guys look pretty solid. Obviously, Lafreniere, who is compared to Timo Solani. Then we got Stu Albert, who we know almost nothing on, so we can't really make an assessment on him yet. But we do have his abilities, and all of them are A+, plus, A+, plus, A, A+, plus, A-, minus, A. So we know that the top five is very good this year. It's just a matter of, can we get to that top five? If we keep winning like we have been, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's not looking good. I mean, jeez. Shootout win. Okay, Leonard's probably turned it on at this point, is my guess. Uh, let's edit lines, man. Lewis, since Jason Hutchinson is back, he's a good goalie prospect of ours. Uh, let's take Smith out of there, and we will get Hutchinson back in there. He's a 57 overall, so he's going to take a bit to develop, unfortunately. But that's fine. I mean, hopefully he'll have uh, some fast growth. Maybe he'll be one of those <laughs> quick bloomers there. So there's a loss against Philly, but we're not really achieving what we wanted to here 
as we're trying to go for the best pick possible. And we're still last in the Metro. And that's no surprise, but I would not imagine, no, we're not last in the league. And as a matter of fact, we might not even be bottom five. We might be, like, sixth last. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, we're not in the entire league right now. We're division. So as, as we go to the bot towards the bottom, we should be... Okay, so we are bottom five, but we're fifth. Uh, fifth from the bottom, I should say. So, as a result of that, I think we're going to make another trade here. Just to increase our chances a little bit more. And let's, uh, but before we do that, let's check out the stats. Because I'm mainly interested in Robin Leonard. As he might have just turned it on. Yeah. <laughs> 9 10 save percentage, meaning he's playing much, much better than the 9 10 right now. He's probably at like 925 or something crazy like that. This is he had like an 899 before. Uh, so would now be a good time to trade Leonard? I think so. So Leonard might be on his way out right here, boys. Might be on his way out. As Le I don't think Leonard's going to be the guy who we're going to move forward with anyway. Uh, he seems to be a bit too inconsistent. For my liking, as he does, like, he had a good year last year, 917, but he had a very, very shaky start to this season. And I, I know our defense is in shambles, but, like, you know, you kind of expect an NHL goaltender to stay above 900, even when the defense is, isn't that great. So, Leonard, we're going to put you on the trade block, see what we can get for you, and absolutely nobody wants Robin Leonard. If I snuck another first round pick in there, like if I took Calgary's for this year, I don't think that'll go through. But with Everly's value in here, you never know. So let's see. Proposed trade rejected. Okay. So maybe if I threw in, if we're getting another another first, I mean, we'll throw in a se our second here. So I, I would not be opposed to giving up our second for to move up for a first for this year. So would that go through? Proposed trade rejected. No. Okay. So I'll just go back to the original. Offer. We'll go with a second, and then I might squeeze in a third in there. Maybe another pick for next year. We'll get a third as well. So, Leonard and Eberly for a first, Brower, a second, and two thirds. Will that go through? No. All right, we'll take out the third for 2021. So, we'll, it'll now be Leonard and Eberly for a first, a second, and a third. And Troy Brower, proposed trade. Will it go through? No. All right, I'll just take out the third. We'll just go with the original offer here. Leonard and Everly for a first, Brower, and a second. Now, keep in mind, Brower's probably taking that trade value down a little bit because Calgary doesn't want to give up their first either, and they don't want Leonard, so that's probably why we're not getting too much back for Leonard. But keep in mind, no team wants Leonard, so we're not going to get the maximum value for Leonard anyway. So I figure, why not trade him to Calgary, who looks like they need a goaltender anyway? And they want Eberly, and, you know, we, we just kind of need to get the best draft pick possible here for our own sake and <laughs> for the sake of this team. So, proposed trade. Oh, my. Okay. So, a second and two-thirds. See if that goes through. No. Okay. Second and a third. Trade accepted. Okay. So, we got Robin, Robin Leonard out of here. So, we're now officially in tag mode. So, we got Grice and Gibson up here. That is fine by me. Uh, we'll just go best lines for right now. Now, the idea of trading Eberly though, is kind of... I, I wouldn't mind it. I honestly wouldn't mind it, because then we could maybe get another first-round pick in there for next year. All right, you know what? We're going to hold off on trading Eberly. I want your guys' feedback on, who, on what we should trade him for, and if that trade with Calgary was good. So let me know. I'll see you guys in the next one.